Welcome back to the line table. The cannabis discussion is not just confined to the roundhouse these days. We learned this week that Ultra Health, the state's largest producer of medical cannabis, is suing the state taxation and revenue department for one and a half million dollars. That's how much the company has paid in gross receipts tax over the past several years. The argument is that medical cannabis should be exempt from that sales tax, just as prescription medicines are. And Diane, they're all, this is all uncharted waters. We're all basically learning as we go here. It's an interesting, this discussion too, about how to deal with these issues. But do you think on this particular issue, does Ultra have a point? I mean, on its face, it seems like they must be right. It is sort of a medical Ex thing, right? Except we, need, uh -huh. except we need to remember uh -huh. that in the Medical Cannabis Act, the, it is not prescribed mm -hmm. by a physician. Gotcha. That is not allowed. A gotcha. physician may not do that. Mm -hmm. They can refer them to the program. Gotcha. And then the program committee and the secretary decide if they're eligible for the medical cannabis program. Mm -hmm. I think that, and if you read all your, uh, if you ever read your health insurance and, and stuff, mm -hmm. it's what is prescribed by a licensed physician or a nurse practitioner, an authorized person. Gotcha. So I think there might be some legal debate as to whether that would be true. Mm -hmm. Now, is it the fact that they're now paying uh, out-of-pocket costs for this? Mm -hmm. And I, as I read some of the numbers, it's like uh, an average of about $1,000 a year extra. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's daunting because usually people, the, if you look at the list of people who are qualified, to be participate in the program. They are not the wealthy, gotcha. usually. They right. are people who are suffering. We know medical costs are extremely expensive, and they're already mm -hmm. uh, under great duress trying to obtain their health care. Mm -hmm. So I think from, from a humanitarian viewpoint, it might be considered uh, because, uh, but I think you would have to amend the uh, the law, the, the right. statute, current right. statute, to include it. I don't think you can just, and I That's don't think point. the courts will, with uh, because it doesn't say they qualify. Right. And so I think that it, it's going to be determined by the courts anyway. Yep. But the, I think it will require legislation. Interesting point. And on that point, Harry, um, Senator Jerry Ortiz Pino was here with my mm -hmm. colleague Gwyneth Dolan last week talking about this very thing. He is proposing legislation, or is going to be proposing legislation, right. mm -hmm. to deal with exactly what Senator Snyder is talking about. Mm -hmm. Is it, again, it's none of us are docs here, but is it right. appropriate? Because, it, well, let me put it this way. If, if in fact, it, it goes the other way, is there any downside to that, of mm -hmm. losing that kind of gross receipts tax, or is it, it harmful really to the business? It really seems or? minimal in terms of the effect on the uh, state budget, so okay. then it becomes an issue of, is this you know, truly a compassionate sort of uh, public uh, policy? And to the extent that there's evidence that this uh, works and it does uh, work for a variety of medical conditions, mm -hmm. it just seems almost cruel to uh, put an additional impediment to that mm -hmm. uh, by uh, uh, adding a GRT to it. Right. You know, uh, Didi, you might remember, and all of us and even at home might remember, this is the same company who had that dust up at the state fair. Right. Remember that, where they were not allowed to, they were going to do an educational booth with a plant and some pictures, and they couldn't even do the pictures. They couldn't do anything. Right. But they kind of, they, they, a judge ruled in their favor a bit on this, and, and Eltra is obviously still pressing on this. But what does that tell us about where medical marijuana is in the, in, in the image of how it is in our, our, our state here? There's still prejudice against mm -hmm. medical marijuana. Right. Just the, it's mm -hmm. tinged by this whole recreational issue. Mm -hmm. And it really, uh, in my view, it really is acting like a medicine for epilepsy, for yeah, AIDS, absolutely. for yeah. cancer. That's right. And, you know, th we, should, we should recognize that. And mm -hmm. I would support uh, Senator Ortiz Pino's bill mm -hmm. uh, to, re to remove the gross receipts tax and to change the definition in the Medical Marijuana mm -hmm. Act. Um, and maybe we can make up some of the revenue by taxing recreational uh, marijuana. There you go. That's our previous segment. As I, as I, right. as exactly. I understand it, the tax rates there are as high as 12 percent right. or 9 percent. Right. That's, right. that's what I uh, yeah. You know, that's going to be a considerable yeah. amount of revenue for both the states right. and the cities. That's good. Let's get into that revenue uh, question, Ed. Let's just go there because there's a <laughs> lot of, you know, some fields worth 20 to 40 million here to the state. Some people have the other end of it completely, like 400 million could come in from recreational uh, licensing of, of marijuana here. But the idea that 
you know, is a cure-all for all of our budgetary ills. Are, are you quite, because I want to talk to you about law enforcement too, since that's part of your background. Let's talk about budget. What, what's your sense of it as you look at it right now? Well, I think we, we need to be very careful with that because we have yeah. to look at the social cost, right? Okay. We, we see yep. there are a lot of states who are, you know, experimenting, so to speak, in, in right. this legaliza legalization of sure. marijuana. But I think we need to be, move very carefully on that, right? Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of the unintended consequences that we must be very careful with. And right. it, the the increase of revenue may not be necessarily the answer. There may be uh, increased costs that, that have been right. uh, unexpected. What concerns so, you as a former law enforcement person? What's the number one thing that kind of gives you a little angst here? Well, my argument has, has always been, you know, we can't control the... Um, and lim limited control, very limited control of mm -hmm. the alcohol problems, the fatalities and things of that sort as a result of people who are um, intoxicated behind the wheel. Well, our concern is if we now legalize another substance, right. will that encourage more individuals who might not use it otherwise than to use it and then cause these other, have this other social impact. Gotcha. So there is, there is that concern. What does that really mean? I, I, I'm an adjunct professor and I, I pose that question to my mm. college students mm -hmm. and it was interesting and most of them are in their, in their early 20s and uh, the majority of them felt that it should be legalized, right? Mm -hmm. The older mm -hmm. students in class said, well, maybe not no, so, no kidding. so it just depends sometimes it's it's a generational thing right yeah, yeah. and that's what we're and that's what we're up against isn't that funny funny how people work in that way isn't it change age changes a right, lot of right. things does it it's very interesting <laughs> hvb there is an, another idea that um uh, we have states to look at and absolutely and that we can not mimic their problems right. or, or states that have done certain things. I want to go to Colorado because you had yeah. supplied us a link to a That's very right. interesting mm -hmm. segment from Colorado PBS about the black market right. in Colorado that is booming because of the situation and partly because of the tax situation too, which Partially. is interesting. Mm -hmm. But Don't also uh, the excess marijuana has to go uh, somewhere. Right. Yeah, and <laughs> what's interesting in thinking about that uh, clip, which I would recommend to anybody, absolutely, uh, is to then put it in conversation with the clip that we uh, had here, mm -hmm. where there was a lot of folks saying, well, the black market isn't really going to be a problem. Right. I think there's a lot of evidence that we really need to uh, bring to a bear. So for example, Ed brought up you know, issues that related to alcohol. Uh, how do we assess impaired driving? That's right. Yeah, we don't really a have a legal to, standard or mm -hmm. a scientific uh, standard. Right. There's some evidence in uh, Colorado that uh, auto fatality rates have uh, gone up, uh, homeless rates have gone up in Denver. The problem is there isn't a straight line between one and the other. Mm -hmm. And so my concern is that there's this rush to legalization on the recreational side without really thinking through what the social costs might well be and what a rational policy is. Right. Just for one example, where would it be grown? Uh, I may uh, be supportive of it, uh, I'm actually on the uh, fence, but sure. I don't think I want a growing house next to where I live. Right. <laughs> I don't think you'd be alone on that. That'd be interesting. Dean, let's talk about the, uh, on the Senate side of things. There's been a lot of noise that the House is more open to this. We have new members, a lot of new Democrats for marijuana legislation of all types, but the Senate where the rubber is going to meet the road. Mm -hmm. What's your sense of how it's, it's going to be debated first and then ultimately go on the Senate side of things? I think it's going to go further than it has gone in okay. the past because there's been more thought given to it there, right. and there's more experience in other states. Mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, uh, we can figure out how to protect the medical marijuana right. uh, dispensaries mm -hmm. and yes. I think that's an important point. Right. Um, I do think that it's, it will have rougher sledding in the Senate than mm -hmm. in the House. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some sort of halfway bills, too. Um, for example, decriminalization bill mm -hmm. uh, sponsored by Senator Cervantes, uh, which I think may have passed in the, in, in, in the past. I think that's, um, you know, that could be... Um, that could be something that would be uh, possible. And that would be session. no small thing. That would be no. a, a, a major leap forward in a lot of regards. Right. Yeah. And remember, the governor has had certain concerns about this as well. Mm -hmm. That's she's, right. she's mentioned these social costs as well. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a real proponent of the medical marijuana mm -hmm. um, uh, bill when it came through mm -hmm. in uh, 2007. And um, I think that... 
under certain circumstances, she would sign a legalization. But I think that some of these details still have to be worked out for her. Mm -hmm. um, and um, perhaps this is the Senate is where they can be worked out. Right. Uh, but the top, but the clock is ticking. Right. You know, <laughs> on this session, and you have what eight, nine hundred bills already introduced. That's right. That's right. And you know, the sky's the limit. It seems. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see how that goes now. We'll continue to follow this issue throughout the 60-day session, certainly. And be sure to head to New Mexico and focus our Facebook page to watch a special discussion we had this week on this year's medical cannabis proposals. That was with Jason Barker of Safe Access New Mexico. It's a great discussion. Still ahead on the timeline, lawmakers take up a pair of life-or-death issues, plus remembering former legislator Kiki Saavedra.